This is an educational video by the 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice. This video covers how race correction in clinical calculators contributes to health inequities in the diagnosis of UTI in pediatric patients. The 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice is a teaching framework to promote health equity and racial justice in medical education. The framework relies on a five-step approach that discusses the clinical and learning context, the current standard of a medical diagnostic or treatment, the historical roots and bias of that standard, contributions to health disparities, and steps to take to promote health equity. This framework offers educators a structured way to talk about this topic in a concise manner across commonly encountered clinical scenarios. By the end of this animation, viewers will be able to recognize that race is a social construct and describe why incorporating race in clinical calculators may not be valid. A 13-month-old Black female presents to clinic for one day a fever to 38.5 Celsius. She does not have any localizing signs of infection and no known sick contacts. In order to determine her risk of having a urinary tract infection to guide further workup and management, the learner physician pulls up the American Academy of Pediatric Guidelines to diagnose urinary tract infections. The learner presents the patient to the attending physician and states, Based on the patient's risk factors, I don't think we need to order a urinalysis to rule out UTI. How might structural racism be affecting patient care here? These conversations are tough to have. Let's watch how these two clinicians navigate this conversation. This is a good opportunity for us to talk about how we've historically used race as a factor in diagnosing UTIs in febrile infants. This wasn't something I learned during my training, but it's very important for us to know to provide equitable care for all our patients. Let's spend a few minutes discussing this. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. We often rely on clinical guidelines to help us practice evidence-based medicine. It's important to critically appraise any guidelines that we use to ensure that we're providing equitable care. Can you tell me what risk factors you considered when you determined not to obtain a urine analysis for this patient? Based on the American Academy of Pediatrics 2011 and 2016 UTI Clinical Practice Guidelines, non-Black race was a significant risk factor for UTI. The guidelines propose that a Black girl greater than 12 months of age who has less than two days of fever, has less than a 1% probability of having a UTI, and recommends against further testing. For over a decade, risk calculators for pediatric UTIs have included non-Black race as a risk factor. But if our patient were instead a white female with the same clinical history, she may have received a urine analysis because the difference in her race would have placed her above the 1% probability of having a UTI. This is an example of race-based medicine, which is problematic. There are many issues with using the social construct of race as a biological determinant of UTI risk. There is no plausible biologic explanation for why non-Black girls would have a higher risk of UTIs than Black girls. Also, race cannot be dichotomized into Black versus non-Black. So how did race become a factor in these clinical guidelines? We have to carefully examine how race was incorporated into the original six studies from which the American Academy of Pediatric UTI guidelines arose. In scientific studies, it's often unclear how race and ethnicity are identified or assigned. The guidelines themselves collapsed multiple racial categories into binary variables of Black or non-Black. It's possible that structural factors, such as decreased access to health care or bias in care, led to lower rates of UTI diagnosis in Black infants in these studies. But by pairing race along the guidelines, it contributes to implicit bias in how we practice medicine or suggests that being Black is protective against UTIs, which is not true. How has this led to differences in outcomes for our patients? The downstream effects are that Black children are tested less often for UTIs, need to have more risk factors to qualify for testing, and may be more likely to have undiagnosed UTIs. A 2021 multi-center study 
showed that Black children had lower rates of urine testing and UTI diagnoses compared to other racial or ethnic groups. Is there anything we can do to bridge this? I'm so glad that you asked that question. In May 2021, the American Academy of Pediatrics Board of Directors voted unanimously to retire the UTI clinical practice guidelines due to improper use of race as a risk factor. Similarly, a separate study showed that removing race from an online UTI risk calculator and replacing it instead with duration of a child's fever and previous history of UTI had similar accuracy. So bring this back to our patient today, what should we do instead? Well, from our discussion, what I learned is that race is a social construct, and we should be skeptical of guidelines that rely on race to determine how we test or treat patients. In the future, I'll make sure to critically examine how race is defined and determined in scientific studies. So for our patient, I would recommend reassessing her risk for a UTI without the inclusion of race as a factor. Fabulous. Let's go see her together. To learn more about the 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice and other health equity resources, visit 5 mm Racial Justice that Stanford that EDU.